Order members, we will now return to the committee motion on the Commonwealth Youth Games bid. And I call Ms. Tarn McEvitt. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I'd like to start by welcoming the opportunity to speak in this debate. And I am sure it is a topic that will see overwhelming support within this chamber. The motion is one which I am positive, if acted upon, will bring a positive impact uh, to the north of Ireland's sport and tradition, its economy and to the very lives of our young people. I suppose, Mr uh, Deputy Speaker, over the past week we have had an opportunity uh, to see the sporting abilities uh, on an international stage and in particular I would like to make reference to the Ireland's rugby team who um, right across the world uh, have witnessed how uh, we behave in a sporting ground. And I would like to take this opportunity to wish them all the best in the, in the games ahead and uh, seeing the crowds and the supporters uh, right across, standing shoulder to shoulder with the team is a fine example to all, so I would like to make reference to them. And I suppose, without uh, diluting anything, I would also like to uh, make reference, and particularly with an international stage, uh, to our boxers. Um, I'm sure, Mr Deputy Speaker, you would agree that our boxing uh, continues to be one of the greatest sport traditions um, and of successes as such uh, as these that will ensure that the tradition will continue for some time to come. Last year, uh, I stood in this very chamber to extend my warm and sincere congratulations to the Northern Ireland Commonwealth team and their successes in Glasgow, while at the same time calling for the Assembly to fully support the efforts to replicate the success in the future. The estimated £3.75 million cost to host the Games may be daunting, but with proper planning and a positive joint approach to development, I believe this represents an investment worth making. It is essential that the North has the facilities and infrastructure in place, not only for the Commonwealth Youth Games, but to ensure that we can avail of other sporting events in the future and to ensure our natural talents and nurtured is, suitable, is nurtured in a suitable environment. All our sports need to be funded adequately and enjoy full support from the Department and the whole Assembly if we are to see um, any success in the future. I do support Northern Ireland's young and excellent athletes. Mr uh, Deputy Speaker, regardless of the politics of the Commonwealth, the Commonwealth Youth Games are a prestigious and international event and one which allows Northern Ireland's athletes to shine. Our athletes and competitors should be given every opportunity to compete in international sporting events, and they should also be given the opportunity to participate in these world-recognised games at home. It is a unifying power of sport that will allow all traditions and communities to come together to cheer and celebrate our athletes, as we have done in the past. It is difficult to overstate the sheer success this region has in hosting the events in the past couple of years. In the face of continued political instability and strife, Northern Ireland's ability to present its world-class hospitality has preserved. Events such as the World Police and Fire Games, the Giro d'Italia, the recent Irish Open in Royal County Down prove that Northern Ireland has the will and the want to host international sporting events. As I have often said to colleagues and constituents, the economic benefits of sport tourism do not end with each event. Tourists return to visit again, and the reputation of the North will be enhanced by each event. Sports tourism remains a booming industry, and this region will continue to benefit greatly from the economic and social benefits that events such as the Commonwealth Games would bring. Mr Deputy Speaker, in the spirit of this unifying power I spoke of, I ask that this Assembly joins together once again to voice its support for the Northern Ireland's bid for the Commonwealth Youth Games in 2021. I believe that regardless of our current dire political uh, circumstances, sport remains a positive force for Northern Ireland and reflect Northern Ireland at its best. And I hope that 2021 in this chamber we will be welcome even greater successes for our young athletes. Thank you. I call Leslie Cree. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, I'm pleased to stand here before the House as a committee member and spokesman on behalf of the Ulster Unionist Party to discuss this important issue today. It is with great annoyance that we have to, to bring this debate to the Assembly 
under such negative circumstances, considering that only nine months ago, Northern Ireland's potential involvement in hosting the 2021 Commonwealth Youth Games was being hailed as one of the good news stories for sport in November 2014. My, my, what a difference several months can make. And guess what the problem is yet again? The dysfunctional Stormont executive and the trailing indecision of the DUP in Sinn Féin to agree a budget has meant that the, in principle, Stormont backing indicated to the Northern Ireland Games Council last year is becoming less certain. Hosting the Games, as other speakers have said, would cost around $3.75 million. I notice it's $3.861 million in the Minister's letter uh, of last week. As recently as August this year, the Executive had not met to discuss the event, even though the DECAL and DETI Ministers had met with Northern Ireland Games Council officials. I can quote the Department of Culture, Arts and Leisure Minister as stating last year, and I quote, her department through Sports Northern Ireland will continue to develop facilities subject to the availability of budgets. Mr Deputy Speaker, I do hope this still remains to be the case and the Minister will find funding for this. To date, the Executive has not called a meeting to discuss the issue, which is required to free up funding to enable the planning of the event to move forward. Last year at the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, Northern Ireland athletes proved their competitiveness and medal success in bringing home some 12 medals, again mentioned by others, ranking Northern Ireland 15 out of the 71 on the medals table. In the light of Northern Ireland's recent successes in attracting major sporting events to Northern Ireland, such as the World Place and Fire Games, the Geo d'Italia and the Carl Frantham Boxing Tournament, it would be a great shame if the Executive cannot muster this 3.861 million to fund the Commonwealth Games in 2021, given that the potential return on investment it would produce for Northern Ireland economy and right across the financial spectrum. Locally, the youth games attract around 1,000 of young athletes whose ages range between 14 and 18, and they compete against their 70 other nations. In terms of the potential footfall in the bigger scheme of things, the 3.8 million seems a very small price to pay over a five-year spending plan. Mr Deputy Speaker, I would urge all members to think outside the box in this particular case. Sport is a global language which embraces all socio-economic backgrounds, ages, gender, colour and creed. Hosting the event in 2021 would certainly put Northern Ireland on the world map. In this time of unease and uncertainty, it would bring back some faith in this place if the Youth Games organisers were given positive funding news from Stormont to proceed with their plans. With only one of the bidders, Botswana, remaining, the Executive need to urgently prioritise their decision to enable Northern Ireland to be in with a fair chance of winning the bid to host these Games in 2021. And just finally, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, I would refer again to the Minister's letter to the Acting First Minister and Minister of Finance and Personnel, dated the 25th of September, just last week. The Commonwealth Games Federation has agreed to extend the closure date for bid submissions until the 30th of September 2015. So it's only two days, Mr Deputy Speaker, not a lot of time, and we do need something to happen with the Executive to get this matter moving. I support the motion. Thank you. I call Rosie McCorley. I would ask McCorley. Um, I um, rise to support this motion today. Um, I will ask call you, several uh, weeks ago, young athletes from the north of Ireland gave an outstanding account of themselves when they went to Samoa to take part in the Commonwealth Youth Games. August Fiyaru Naglecki, Vistor Wai Bonacar, Lakela Aku, and Esportiona. And by the end of the Games, they had notched up an extreme exemplary array of medals in their sports. August Marihan does her show, Hogan Ira Sports, Carl Nikilling, Chakdrak Jess, Doi, De Hogar Jess Doive. In recognition of this, Sports Minister Carl Nikilling sent them a very warm welcome uh, message of congratulations. Sixteen local athletes from the North competed in the Games and events, including boxing, swimming, athletics, squash, and lawn bowls. And an amazing 12 medals have been brought home for various sports. 
Once again, Irish boxers showed they can punch above their weight, with James McGivern, Stephen McCann and Nathan Mulch all winning gold in their events. Tiernan Bradley and Brett McGinty took silver medals. In the swimming events, Conor Ferguson achieved a massive feat when he won four medals in the 200 metres, 100 metres and 50 metre backstroke, as well as the relay. James Brown, Danielle Hill and Emma Reid were the other, other winners in the relay team. And competing in track events, Ben Fisher took bronze in both the 110 metres hurdles and the long jump. Completing the medals, Stephen Kirkwood won bronze in long bowls. So with their four gold, four silver and four bronze medals, the team from the North finished in eighth place overall. A huge achievement and one which we are all incredibly proud of. Roddy and Ducko and Shamak Oxtumbage and Brody, alas. The Sports Minister went on to pay tribute to the sport team, including coaching and medical staff who accompanied the competitors. It is very important also that we applaud everyone who, who took part in the Games and not just the medal winners. For those who missed out this time, we wish you better luck next time. And it is next time that is the subject of today's motion. In November 14, this Assembly unanimously endorsed supporting a bid to host the 2021 Commonwealth Youth Games here, and the deadline to bid for those Games is the day after tomorrow. And we know that responsibility for events lies with the Dairy Minister, and uh, the previous Minister, along with the Culture, Arts and Leisure Minister, met with the Commonwealth Games Council last June on this issue. It was agreed at the meeting that Sport NI would continue to support the Commonwealth Games uh, Council on the preparation of the business case. And prior to Minister Bell's resignation, he issued, issued a letter saying that both he and the Finance Minister were formally advising the Games Council of their support for the bid to host the Youth Games and that officials would work with them on the development and submission of the bid. So, I would say, um, alas, Concordia, that it's disappointing to say that the chair of the CAL committee is not even here to listen, never mind take part in this important motion, which will bring this great event to the north of Ireland and will create a huge opportunity for our young local athletes to take part on their home turf. And it is a matter of real disappointment that only one DUP committee member thinks that that's a good reason to be here today. Um, but I would say that it is good news to learn that uh, steps have been taken by the, the, the uh, Derry and the Finance Ministers to ensure that the bid will proceed. So um, it, it's good that there's some common sense has prevailed at the last minute. So I welcome that move. And uh, I would just like to say in conclusion that um, it's my and scale shin, that is good news. August Hockey and Leshen Rune, I support the motion. Goramel. I call Anna Lou. Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, in November 2014, I spoke on behalf of the Alliance Party in support of a bid for Northern Ireland to host the 2021 Commonwealth Youth Games. Our position remains unchanged. However, at the last debate, it was mentioned that conversations had already started and that discussions were underway between the Northern Ireland Commonwealth Games Council, Sport and I and officials in the CAO. We called on the executive to develop a bid, the deadline for which is the end of September 2015. Today is the 28th of September. Given the Assembly's unanimous support last year, I am hugely disappointed. No bid has been made so far. I am not on the com uh, Culture, Arts and Leisure Committee so I am unaware how much work has actually been put into this bid, but surely it is far too late now to attempt to submit any bid. This is perhaps another indication of the lack of joint up workings of departments and the lack of delivery in the Assembly. Mr. Deputy Speaker, we celebrated the success of our athletes who competed in the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow last summer. We were proud of how well we handled the first stage of the Gera d'Italia. We saw how positive the World Fire and Police Games were. After each one of these events, we stood here and said how important it is for us to build on these successes. I agree that hosting the Commonwealth Youth Games would be an appropriate step to encourage more international events to be held in Northern Ireland. 
but action speaks louder than words. What action has been taken in the last year to facilitate this? And hearing from other speakers, it would seem like there are a lot of issues with the executive, with budget, with debt, and we just don't seem to be able to agree on anything. Mr. Deputy Speaker, with the huge successes of Gyro d'Italia, the Wellfire and Police Games, the MTV Music Awards and the Irish Open, we know we are more than capable of hosting world-class international events. We have so much to offer, and it is important to take every opportunity to show the world the positive Northern Ireland that all too often gets overshadowed by our negative politics. This is clearly another missed opportunity. Thank you. I call Cahill O'Hoshin to conclude and wind up the debate on the motion. I'm very pleased, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, to uh, uh, wind on this as a member of the CAL Committee and also as our party's culture, arts and leisure spokesperson. When I first uh, seen the uh, motion, uh, I was a bit perplexed about it because we had discussed a very, very similar motion, of course, back in November last year, and there was a degree of unanimity around that subject. And, uh, I was not convinced that perhaps it wasn't Mr. McRae's attempt to get a 10-minute slot on Stormont today, but uh, I'm very happy to, to, to discuss this here today. Um, I think it is timely that it has come forward, and I think that uh, the developments that we have heard in the last 24 hours have to be very, very welcomed uh, in that uh, at least a, a letter of comfort is there in place in regards of the bid. And I would be hopeful that, given the fact that the uh, owner, other sort of uh, um, serious bid is from Botswana. I'd be very hopeful that the North here can possibly secure that. Um, I'd like to thank all the others who have contributed to this debate today. And it's, a, it's a, an issue on which the committee has been united. And I know my colleague Rosie McCarty has just touched on the disappointment that the chair and other members uh, have not turned up. But there has been a fair degree uh, of unanimity on this. Uh, the games, like all sports, of course, have uh, a lot of positives for them and not least the participation of women uh, and the inspiration that it gives to many of the younger athletes, athletes as well as raising the profiles of sport and encouraging general participation in sport uh, and subsequently, of course, uh, health and well-being. Um, it also shows that there is a capacity here uh, to hold major sporting events and certainly those of us who are looking forward to some of those events coming up, like the likes of the Open in 2019 or indeed the Rugby World Cup in uh, 2023, which we would all look very much forward uh, to. Um, Mr McRae uh, did highlight the uh, cross-community aspect of, of this, and uh, he had, did commend the Minister's positive response uh, to question the Minister for Decal's positive response to the Convention on uh, the Youth Commonwealth Games. He also mentioned the support from uh, Minister Arlene Foster uh, for that. And the and this, this gives us the opportunity to put the member's support uh, uh, on record for the bid. Uh, Karen McEvans welcomed the debate and uh, outlined the positive benefits of it. Uh, it gives an international stage uh, for this part of Ireland. She also wished the Ireland rugby team well. And I think we all celebrated yesterday. I came back from the Ulster uh, Hurling final to watch, sit down and watch the rugby, and it was absolutely brilliant seeing in a great performance against Romania, as it was indeed against Canada previously. And I would hope that they would go very far this time round. Um, these games would seek to replicate the success of the Glasgow Games, uh, which were a great success indeed in, in, terms, of, in terms of medals. Um, I think the cost of the bid is re relatively modest, although it is a significant amount of 3.8 million. I know there were forensically last week we were going through the legacy monies for the City of Culture, which is only slightly more than that, and which I am very, very supportive of. So I hope that people would be also supportive of this. Um, the bid success uh, will, of course, I say, allow us to bid for further uh, support for uh, other events in the future. And it, it is irrespective of the politics of uh, the Commonwealth, uh, of the Commonwealth in itself, and uh, indeed, particularly in boxing, Many of our great boxers who went on to box for Ireland 
uh, to cut their teeth on Commonwealth Games. So you know, that, has to be, that has to be welcomed, regardless of what the politics of that is. Um, we had a great success in the World Police and Fire Games, and I outlined it the last time when we looked at a, a rather modest um, fishing competition in my own constituency, which has now brought forward uh, huge proposals for the development of the entire foil basin in terms of tourism and indeed of other sporting uh, events. We had, of course, the Giro d'Italia and the Irish Open. It shows that we have the ability here to uh, host those type of events. It shows the benefits of sports tourism. And it's a unifying power as well, and I have seen that myself at, at uh, places like the Kingspan Stadium and elsewhere, where we see people who are going to games and events that perhaps a few short years ago uh, they might not have considered. So all of that, all of that is to be welcomed. Um, Leslie Cree outlined the cost of 3.75 billion. He was disappointed that the executive had not signed off on it, and he commended the performance of the North athletes at Glasgow. Um, the Youth Games uh, attracts about 1,000 athletes, and the cost of the Games is relatively small, as he did point out, over a five-year CSR period. Uh, there is positive diversity in the Games in terms of race and religion and nationality and all the rest of it. And he asked the Executive to, pos to, to respond uh, positively. Um, I have to say I am pleased that we are uh, joined in the public gallery today by Conor Heatley, who is the NI. Uh, Commonwealth Games Council Executive Officer, and he's just come in the door there. So that's all. And uh, I went on. Rosie McCarty then reflected on the successes of the North Athletes in the Youth Games in Samoa, and indeed the Minister's support. And can I just maybe pass on off the four gold medals, uh, the four silver medals, and the four bronze medals? One of the golds was to James McGivern, who is a cousin of Rosie's partner. So congratulations, particularly to him and to, 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 to Rosie and her family. Uh, she highlighted the closeness of the deadline for the bid. Uh, she referenced the, the DFP and Deputy Minister's letter of support, and this is positive. And she referenced the Chair's absence again, and I have I've already uh, touched on that earlier. Uh, Anna Lowe reflected on last year's debate on the bid and that everything seemed to be in track, but she did express and recorded her disappointment they were so close to the deadline uh, for a bid. She also highlighted our sporting successes in the workplace and fire games and the Giro d'Italia. So, all in all, I think this is a, a motion uh, and a cause that has united. And I hope very much that we are, that, uh, that it is successful, uh, and that we see a very successful uh, Commonwealth Youth Games uh, come here to the north. And indeed, it will benefit the whole island because I think there is a wider uh, sporting uh, interest there in it in 2021. So, I commit, uh, kind of I commend the, the motion and uh, hope everyone votes in favour. Members, the question is that the motion standing on the order paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Item 8 on the order paper, the adjournment. The question is that the Assembly do now adjourn. The Assembly is adjourned. <laughs>